you that we are not doing property because I thought that PPIUD is nowadays the most commonly used method. So if you have done one, it's okay for you. So manual vacuum aspiration is actually a method which is used to evacuate the contents of the uterus. And uh, it is very commonly used currently for missed abortion and incomplete abortion. It is safe, it is simple, it is effective, and it is actually, it is in the end, it is cost beneficial as well. So if you look at the MVA itself, it is quite a complicated, it looks like a complicated syringe to you. It's like a syringe which can create a suction pressure. And it has got various parts. So if you look at it, this is the plunger. This is the cylinder. This is this whole gadget is uh, is basically a nozzle which has got a clasp, which has got two valve buttons and it's got a small cap. Now the concept of MVA basically is that MVA is going to if you lock this clasp and your syringe your vacuum is going to be created. So when we are going to insert this syringe with the or the MVA with the valve buttons pressed and with the suction created. We just have to insert it with the cannula into the uterine cavity and release these clasps. When the clasps are released, the suction automatically starts working and products of conception start coming into the syringe. You can rotate it and then just take the syringe out along with the cannula and the uterus will be emptied. So I'm just telling you the simplistic version. Now, what are the advantages of MBA? The advantages are it doesn't need a lot of cervical dilatation. So if we give sublingual mesoprostol before the procedure, there's barely any dilatation which is required. It is better than a sharp curate because the sharp curate is likely to injure the endometrium and result in complications future on. It has got less blood loss. It has got a shorter hospital stay because it is not necessary to do it under general anesthesia. It can also be done under a paracervical block. It reduces the need for anesthetic drugs because we are doing it for a shorter period of time if we do it under GA and it is less costly. Now, coming back to our checklist, again, the same way as we have been doing with other skills and procedures, an indication should be present, required instrument should be in place, prerequisites should be met, procedure should be performed in the correct stepwise fashion, post MVA steps should be taken, all the procedures should be documented and instructions should be given at discharge to the patient. Now, first of all, look at the indication. So basically, the most common indication is evacuation of the uterus, which is less than 12 weeks in size. This is the most common indication. It can be used for spontaneous, induced, missed, incomplete, all kinds of miscarriages. And if we use a small cannula, it can also be used to get an endometrial sampling, like a papel. So it can also work like a papel if the size of the cannula that is taken is small. Now, if you look at it, these are the sizes of various cannulas, and this is this is number seven, the light brown. This is the most commonly used cannula when we are doing uh, suction for pro evacuating the products of conception. So the aspirator or the cannula, the, or the aspirator or the syringe, this is called I pass MVA plus aspirator. So this is this is the equipment that we need along with the appropriate size cannula. Along with that, the usual things like sponge holding forceps, sim speculum. 10 cc syringe for cycle block and lignoke. This is again a larger version of the syringe and how it looks like, or so how does the M MVA plus aspirator looks like. This is how it looks like. Uh, these are the various cannula, and I just told you before that the brown cannula is the number seven, seven millimeter cannula, and this is the most commonly used cannula, but it is not necessary to do it only with the seven mm. We start from four and we can go up till 12. All of them are not mentioned. We have only taken it from 4 to 8 mm, which are the commonly used cannulas. 4 mm can be used for taking an endometrial biopsy if you need it. Then the prerequisites are again similar. So we counsel the patient, we take an informed consent, we prepare our instrument, especially the MV and the cannula, by dipping in Cydex solution for 30 minutes. Mesoprostol 200 microgram is given sublingual. Now the purpose of the mesoprostol is to soften the cervix. So if mesoprostol tablet is placed under the tongue 30 to 60 minutes prior to the procedure, the cervix will be said very soft and not a lot of dilatation will be required. Put the patient in the thought position, wash up, gown, glove, drape. What do you do next? The next comes the procedure of MVA. But the procedure of MVA I have divided into nine steps. First step is preparation of the patient. In preparation of the patient, along with filling the prerequisites, we empty the bladder. 
conduct a biomanual examination to reconfirm the size of the uterus, and then a speculum is inserted. And after the speculum is inserted, the cervix is cleaned. And the method of cleaning the cervix is that an antiseptic soaked sponge is taken. And if you look at the diagram below, you start from the os and then you start in a rotatory movement to clean the cervix from inside to outside. Inside does not mean that you go inside the cervix. It just means that you start at the external os and then in a rotatory movement, you clean the whole of the cervix. Once the cervix is completed, step two is complete. Step three is basically the dilatation of the cervix. Uh, step three, sorry, is the paracervical block. So paracervical block is basically performed at the level of the external os, and first a small dose of one to two cc uh, lignocaine, one percent solution is injected to numb the area of that cervix. And then the rest of the injection is injected at 2, 4, 8, and 10 o'clock positions in equal amounts at the level of the cervicovaginal junction. Now, the important thing to understand is that by performing the paracervical block, we are not taking the vessels are at 3 and 9 o'clock positions. So, we have ignored the vessels because if we have vessel mein lignocaine or xylocaine inject, kar denge, that can lead to severe problems. So, we have to inject at 2, 4, 8, and 10. And you might ask me the question, why are you injecting at 12 o'clock? Because at 12 o'clock, we are going to put up the tenaculum or the valserum forceps. That is why at 12 o'clock, there should be a little bit of anesthesia. Now, then comes the process of dilatation of the cervix. So most of the time, as I told you, dilatation of the cervix is not required. But if it's required, then you can use mechanical dilators to dilate the cervix to the, time, to the space that you want. And as I told you, usually we use the 7 mm cannula. It is the most beneficial. So usually you dilate the cervix around 6 to 8 millimeters. Then comes the actual procedure of apply, uh, placing the, passing the cannula through the, through the cervix. Now, again, I'm going to repeat what I told you earlier on, that the most important thing that you have to do over here is that you have to prepare the syringe. And in preparing the syringe, I told you that you create, uh, press the buttons, which I will show you again, and then create a vacuum. This vacuum created syringe is actually inserted through the external loss. And because we have done dilatation, we should not need to push the cervix, uh, push the cannula into the cervix because it can result in perforation. So don't do that. And if you don't do that, it's a very simple and effective method. Now, over here, we are going to tell you how to prepare the aspirator, but let me first complete. Over here, we have told you that you have inserted the cannula, you insert the cannula, you release the side buttons and the products of conception will come out. You use a rotatory and to and fro motion to make sure that all the contents come out and then you take out the syringe. This method can be done maybe once or twice if you feel that the uterus is not empty. I will take you to the cannula assembly later on. This is how it looks like and this is this is all assembled and you don't need to know the steps of assembly at this stage of your career. But this is assembled when you come to the ward we are going to show you. Then you create, press these knobs, create the vacuum. Once the vacuum is created, you insert the cannula into the uterine cavity. And once it is inserted into the uterine cavity, you use two kinds of motions. To and fro motion and rotatory motion so that whatever the products of conception are, they are sucked out. Once the products of conception are sucked out and the process is finished, you have to ensure that the process is finished. And how do you ensure that the process is finished? You have to ensure by these signs. And these signs are the presence of pink foam without any tissue in the cannula. A gritty sensation is felt when you are evacuating the uterus. And the uterus contracts around the grip of the cannula. And the patient, if she's awake, she will complain of cramping pain showing that the uterus is contracting. So once you have ensured that the uterus is empty, then your process will come to an end. So what are you going to do once the uterus is empty? You're going to inspect the tissue. And over here, if you see, they're they are using a sieve so that the water passes through and the products of conception remain there. So you strain the material, examine the products of conception, and you can send them for histopathology as well. Now, once the MVA is completed, there are certain post-MVA steps. And the post-MVA steps are basically, you have to ensure that the patient is escorted to the recovery, disinfect the instruments, and give NTD if it is required. Now, disinfection of the incidents, we have been talking about that. We have three methods of disinfecting, and it depends on the place where you are. 
So the easiest method and the simplest method and the least costly method of disinfecting is by uh, high by 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 dipping them into 0.5 percent chlorine solution. So you can dip them into 0.5 percent chlorine solution after washing with water. You can dip them in a Cytex solution or you can sterilize and autoclave them. So if MVAB is being done at the, uh, at the tertiary level, at the periphery level in the rural areas and they do not have enough facilities, even if you dip it into 0.5% chlorine solution, the, infect, the instruments can be disinfected. Now, everything that you do always has to be documented. So you have to document the date and time of the procedure, any complications if they are there, and if you have provided any method of contraception, it has to be documented. Instructions and discharge are basically two. One is advising for a revisit after one week, and the other is basically to present back if there is any pain or bleeding or any other thing going on. So I'm just going to, before I come to your presentation, I just want to take you through it once more. And OK, so let's see what the presentation has for us. Today's video uh, is about manual vacuum aspiration. A manual vacuum aspiration is a simple procedure which can be done without uh, general anesthesia, or it can be done can be done with paracervical or cervical anesthesia. So there are certain prerequisites uh, for performing the uh, manual vacuum aspiration. First of all. Uh, the students should have confirmed the indication. Counsel the couple regarding the uh, uh, regarding the procedure, its benefits, its risks, and complications, as well as if there is a need of contraception and, uh, uh, and uh, counsel the couple regarding the contraception and take the informed consent both for manual vacuum aspiration as well as contraception. Give the mesoprostol 200 micrograms sublingually. 30 to 60 minutes before the procedure, as well as analgesia. Prophylactic antibiotic should be given, or, uh, in the, or therapeutic antibiotic if it is needed. Ask the patient to empty her bladder, put the patient in the lithotomy position, clean and drain, do the biomanual examination after to assess the size of the uterus. After the biomanual examination, uh, uh, insert the speculum. First of all, insert the speculum to visualize the cervix. But before inserting the speculum, I will show the uh, parts of the manual vacuum aspirator and instruments which are required. I have uh, already deassembled uh, the important thing regarding the manual vacuum aspiration. Manual vacuum aspiration is uh, assembling and deassembling. As uh, regarding the assembling and deassembling, there are the certain parts uh, which you and the students should know uh, and uh, their name uh, or how they work, they should know. This is the cannula. There are the different size of the cannulas, uh, which are, can be used during manual vacuum aspiration. It has an aperture. It has an apertures and the rings, and it has the, its size written over the uh, over the cannula. Then for the other parts, this is a valve. It is actually uh, uh, these are instruments are designed to create a vacuum inside the cylinder so that vacuum aspiration of the retained product of conception can be done. This is inner sheet. This is cap which will be which will insert over the valve. This is cylinder and this is plunger. Now the, over the plunger, this is o-ring of the plunger. It is a handle of the plunger. These are the arms of the plunger. And over the valve, this is the area where cap uh, will be we will insert the cap. These are the valve button, and this is the uh, inner sheet which we insert inside the this. So it can be closed like that. We can insert this cap over there. So these are the parts which we can assemble. Uh, for the this valve to create the uh, uh, to create the vacuum inside the cylinder. Cylinder also has the it's a collar stop. This is a collar. This is the collar stop. Here is the collar stop. I think it's a collar stop and it's 
uh, it's a base of the this is the here is the uh, cholesterol is placed this is the uh, 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 part of the cylinder lower portion of the cylinder so for the uh, performing the procedure these are the mechanical dilators sponge holding forceps trenaculum sim speculum and two swabs i will insert sim speculum to visualize the cervix can you see the cervix this is the cervix i will do the cleaning with antiseptic soap two swabs from the lower side to the upper side in the rotatory motion after that i will hold the anterior lip of the cervix with sim speculum uh, sorry with sponge holding forceps and i will see if there is cervix is dilated or uh, os is open or not if it is open then i can insert the cannula of the aspirator if not then i will use the dilator to dilate the inter to dilate the cervix after the dilatation i will insert an appropriate size as it is here uh, the 6 mm cannula is uh, appropriate for that model so i will insert the 6 millimeter cannula and i will use the i will charge i will assemble the manual vacuum aspirator with this button move upward and forward i have created the vacuum inside the aspirator so i will attach this manual vacuum aspirator and will release the pressure i will do the rotatory motion of through 180 degree and in and out motion fir se dikhaiye please come forward rotatory motions so that the retained product of conception can be evacuated after doing if the cylinder is filled with the uh, retained product of conception i will remove the manual vacuum aspirator or this mva i will uh, remove these retained product of conception i or empty this cylinder inside the kidney tray then again i will charge it and if there is any need that the uterus is not completely empty or it is still having the rpcs then i can repeat the same procedure again the important thing is that all these valves and these arms of the plunger should be in the same line then again i will attach will release the pressure do the same procedure when there is a sign of complete evacuation of the uterus that uh, if there is a greeting greedy sensation over all surfaces of the uterus while moving the cannula over the surface of the uh, over the inner surfaces of the uterus or there is pink foam without tissue coming passing through the cylinder or patient has crampy abdominal pain due to the contraction of the uterus or there is contraction of the uterus and cannula the, there is will be the grip over the cannula then the uh, uterus is completely empty then i will uh, take out the whole system and i will again disassemble it first of all i will evacuate this cylinder this uh, cylinder i will uh, empty in, inside the kidney tray then i will dispose of uh, 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 then i will start the procedure uh, of uh, uh, local protocol of disinfecting of these instruments according to the local protocol immediately i will see for any uh, bleeding yeah, any bleeding and uh, 
ask uh, the patient uh, or reassure the patient that the procedure has been complete. Uh, escort the patient to the recovery room. In the recovery room, monitor the patient for pulse, blood pressure, uh, and vaginal bleeding, pulse, blood pressure, uh, temperature, and vaginal bleeding. Give her analgesia and antibiotic. If patient is RS negative, give her NTD and ask her for follow up after one week. Do the documentation for the date, time, and procedure, and about the contraception, which has already been, already been decided and can be placed after the completion of the procedure. Thank you. Okay, so I will just take you one last time on the checklist and then we will finish. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions that you have, people? Just look at the checklist once again. Indication must be present. You should have the right instruments. Prerequisites should be fulfilled. The correct method should be performed. Post MVA, the patient should be kept under observation. Documentation should be done and appropriate instructions should be given at the time of discharge. So we are done with it. If you have any questions, you can open your mics and ask me your relevant questions. Anything that you want to know? Any questions? Ma'am, ma this ma bleeding or perforation ke lewa, kya -kya complications ho sakti hai, process? Ho? Actually, uh, this is a very safe procedure. So if I may be able to say so, you can observe for bleeding, but if there is bleeding, it means that the procedure was not complete. So you can watch for bleeding. Perforation ka chance, obviously, is maybe has uh, like it is in a DNC, but the incidence of perforation with MVA is extremely low as compared to a DNC or a evacuation of retained products of conception procedure that we normally do. So, bohat kam complications as well. That is why it's a beautiful procedure and unless we can do it. So, if I have to give this, uh, get the evacuation of the contents of the uterus done by a midwife, this would be my preference. And all over the world, it is a preference. Or quick question. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. So I assume there are no other questions. So let's meet on Friday then. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.